Lawmaking. Statutory interpretation. 3. The mischief rule. Once Parliament has passed an act, it then falls to the courts to apply the statute in a particular case. This can lead to difficulties where the facts of the case may not have been envisaged by Parliament or where there exist drafting errors or ambiguity in the statute. The Interpretation Act of 1978 provides certain basic definitions such as singular includes plural and he includes she. In addition, the courts have developed rules to assist judges in interpreting statutes. The rules of statutory interpretation are 1. The literal rule 2. The golden rule 3. The mischief rule In addition, there is the purposive approach. Although referred to as rules, they are not strictly binding and some commentators have argued that they are used to justify a decision rather than assisting the decision-making process. This video will focus on explaining the mischief rule. Look out for other videos in this series explaining the other rules. There are also videos discussing the advantages and disadvantages of each rule. Judges are assisted by various aids to interpretation. These can be internal aids or external aids. Look out for videos on these too. The mischief rule of statutory interpretation is the oldest of the rules. The mischief rule was established in Hayden's case, 1584. According to Hayden's case, in applying the mischief rule the court must discern and consider, 1. What was the common law before making the act? 2. What was the mischief and defect for which the common law did not provide? 3. What was the remedy Parliament passed to cure the mischief? 4. What was the true reason for the remedy? The role of the judge is to suppress the mischief and advance the remedy. In Re Sussex Peerage, it was held that the mischief rule should only be applied where there is ambiguity in the statute. Judges should start with the literal rule. If this leads to absurdity they may apply the golden rule. If the literal rule is of no assistance due to ambiguity, the judges can then use the mischief rule. Ambiguity arises frequently as one party to a case is arguing that one meaning should be applied and the other party is arguing a different meaning. There is therefore much more scope for judges to use the mischief rule, rather than the golden rule. This gives much greater flexibility to the judge in determining the meaning of the statute. Case examples of the mischief rule include Smith v. Hughes, Royal College of Nursing v. DHSS, Elliot v. Gray, Corkery v. Carpenter and DPP v. Bull. In Smith v. Hughes the defendants were prostitutes. They had been charged under the Street Offences Act 1959. This made it an offence to solicit in a street or public place. The prostitutes were soliciting from private premises in windows or on balconies so could be seen by the public. The court had decided the meaning of public place. On a strict interpretation they were in a private place, but the fact that they were on view to the public could be taken to be a public place. The court applied the mischief rule holding that the activities of the defendants were within the mischief the act was aimed at. Their convictions were upheld. The case of Royal College of Nursing v. DHSS concerned the legality of abortions carried out by nurses. With advances in medical science, surgical abortions had been largely replaced by hormonal abortions and nurses were administering the hormones. The Offences Against the Person Act 1861 makes it an offence for any person to carry out an abortion. The Abortion Act 1967 provided that it would be an absolute defence for a medically registered practitioner to carry out abortions. Under a literal interpretation this would mean only doctors could carry out abortions. The court held that the Abortion Act was aimed at allowing abortions under medically supervised conditions and therefore nurses could legally conduct abortions. In Elliot v. Gray, the defendant's car was parked on the road. It was jacked up and had its battery removed. He was charged with an offence under the Road Traffic Act 1930 of using an uninsured vehicle on the road. The defendant argued he was not using the car on the road as clearly it was not drivable. The court applied the mischief rule and held that the car was being used on the road. It represented a hazard and therefore insurance would be required in the event of an incident. In Corkery v. Carpenter the defendant was riding his bicycle whilst under the influence of alcohol. Section 12 of the Licensing Act 1872 made it an offence to be drunk in charge of a carriage on the highway. The question for the court was whether a bicycle was a carriage. The court applied the mischief rule holding that riding a bicycle was within the mischief of the act. 
the defendant represented a danger to himself and other road users. DPPV Bull concerned the meaning of the word prostitute and whether it could include males. The court held that the act only applied to females. The word prostitute was ambiguous and they applied the mischief rule. The Street Offences Act was introduced as a result of the work of the Wolfenden Report into Homosexuality and Prostitution. The report only referred to female prostitution and did not mention male prostitutes. In summary, the mischief rule is the oldest of the three rules. It can only be applied where there is ambiguity in the statute. Under the mischief rule, the court's role is to identify the mischief the act is aimed at and suppress the mischief and advance the remedy. This video is part of a series of videos on law from www.e-lawresources.co.uk. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel www.youtube.com slash at e-lawresources. It's free to do so and will help us to keep providing these videos. Check out our website which provides lecture outlines and case summaries. See also www.e-lorevision.org.uk for revision games and quizzes. Thanks for watching.